Alright, cool. I got the recording going. Alright, so um, I'm going to go over Abyssals. There's three different ways you can do them. There's solo, two man, and three man. When you do start the Abyssals, to get in through the gate, it only allows you in a certain ship depending on your fleet size. So when you're in solo doing them, you have to use a cruiser. There's no other choice. When you're doing, doing them as a two-man, you have to use destroyers. No other choice. When you're doing them as a three-man, you have to use frigates. No other choice. Um, the items used to get you in there, let me go in. Everybody can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go into my folder in here. It's a container. I label them differently. It allows me to organize my stuff. You guys should probably do the same too. Makes Once you start getting a lot of stuff, it makes it a lot easier to, to separate and find things you need. But I have one called Abyssal Stuff. I put all my filaments and different things from Abyssals in there. Now all these, if you do exploring, or even from your daily logins, you've probably seen these red filaments here. These take you to different level abyssals. There's from level 0 to 5 or 0 to 6, something like that. I believe it's 0 to 5, which gives you 6 levels. Um, the lowest level ones are going to be called Tranquils. You would technically call those a level 0. Those are the easiest to do. They have the, I'd say, the least amount of value of loot, but they allow you to learn. So this is a Tranquil Gamma. I recommend Gammas, especially if you're in a shield ship. It makes it way easier in a shield ship. S depending on what they say, like there's... Let me see. I only have Gammas here. Let me go into the Corp Hanger. Can I ask what... I, I don't even know what an Abyssal is. Okay, so an Abyssal is... Do you guys know what Triglavians are? If you haven't read about the lore or know anything about it, they are like sleepers, what you would find in wormholes. But they are from a different part of space and somehow got to our, like, our space through wormholes. They opened up these things, which we're going to go through one of these into their pocket of space. But Triglavian right. space, um, it's essentially like a red-colored background. There's lightning and gas clouds. Uh, Graphics-wise, it's one of the best-looking environments in the game. Um, in here, you'll be fighting these Triglavians. They are an invading force. That expansion happened a little while ago, and they actually took part of HiSec. They took a triangle-shaped section of space and shut off the gates. And you can't get in unless you come in through a filament into their space, or you go in through um, a wormhole getting into their space. To be allowed in there, you have to grind up standings by fighting these guys called Edencom. You may have seen systems that you go through and they have Edencom Gunstar, um, like turrets at the gates and Edencom ships everywhere and an Edencom buff above your shield and armor. Well, yeah. these Edencoms are the forces that fight against the Triglavians. Now by killing Edencom, you'll get your standings up with Triglavians and Triglavians will allow you to freely fly in their space. The downside of this is when you're in high sec, when you go to pass through Edencom systems, they won't like you anymore and you'll be attacked there. So unless you plan to live inside of Triglavian space, um, I don't recommend attacking the Edencom guys. I recommend staying good on their side. Now, the Abyssals are like pocket private versions of this Triglavian space. When we click on the Abyssal or the Filament, it opens up a gate. You can click on them anywhere in space. Like, you have to be far away from something. I'll show, like, demo that. But you, um, you can click on them in any solar system, in a wormhole, in low sec, high sec, or null sec. And they will open up a portal for you that will teleport you into this pocket of abyssal space. Now, the pocket of abyssal space has three rooms inside of it. Each of these rooms are going to have enemies in it, and an abyssal gate to get to the next room. You have to kill the enemies to get the gate to open. If you don't kill the gate, or the enemies, the gate will never open. You could never advance to room 2 and advance to room 3 and then get out of the abyssal. If you don't get out of all three rooms, your ship and your pod gets blown up. And you have a 20 minute timer to complete all three rooms. So ideally you have a little less than 7 minutes to do each room. 
So whether you're solo or in a group of three, it's almost a race against the clock. Kill the guys, loot, make it through the gate, kill the guys, loot, make it through the gate, kill the guys, loot, make it through the gate, and you're back in high sec where you started. So you don't have to go far away, you don't have to go a lot of jumps, you don't have to travel anywhere. These filaments take you to the combat and back out of the combat. Okay, sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's PvE, there's no PvP involved, although sometimes they do events to where there'll be a gate inside here that can take you to a PvP fight, like an arena. I'm not going to cover any of that right now because the event's not going on, but you'll just be fighting NPCs. They're kind of difficult NPCs. You'll see when I do it solo and when we do it as a fleet, they're smart. You launch your drones, they're going to target your drones. You're like, okay, I'll pull them back in and launch them again. You launch them again, they target your drones again sometimes. So it's tough. They use uh, webs, they use um, uh, capacitor drain, like energy neutralizers and energy nosses. So sometimes they will start draining your capacitor down. And then you have to look over at your overview and figure out which one of them is draining your capacitor and then either turn off your weapons and focus your fryer on him or, you know, just tell everybody in the fleet, hey, everybody kill this guy, like, he's going to drain my capacitor, I'm not going to be able to shield rep, I'm not going to be able to afterburner, I'm going to die. So you got to know when and where to focus your damage depending on who you're fighting in these abyssals. The okay. enemies in each room of the abyssal is random. You don't know if you're going to fight ten ships or two ships. If it's two ships, it's going to tend to be two big ships, like battleships. If it's ten ships, it's going to tend to be small ships, like uh, drone-sized things to frigates and destroyers. Um, again, you have to kill them all to get through to the next room. You have about seven minutes, so it's, it's definitely a race against the clock. The containers in here are going to be different. Normally, you're, you're used to killing an enemy and looting an enemy to get loot off it. In here, the containers, they're static, they're like stuck in space, and they look red like an enemy. One's going to be called a bio-combinative catch, and the other ones are going to be called like sub-nodes and nodes. And the bio-combinative catch is really what you want to go after. That has the good loot. Ignore the other ones, because those are really there to deter you, to make you waste time, to give you a chance of losing. And you don't ever want to risk that. You want to keep your ship so you can continually do these abyssals over and over. These filaments, you get these in there, you loot them. So as long as you loot some of these or buy some of these, you can continually run abyssals and make way more. Like whatever, let me see, a tranquil costs 105000 I bet I'll walk out of there with a couple million. So you easily make back plus more what you, you know, what you're investing to do these. Expect for it to take 20 minutes or less, ideally less. If it takes more, you die, you lose your ship and pod. It's sometimes a smart idea to make um, clones. If you're not familiar with those, I'll do a class on those also soon. What it is is a copy of your pod that you can leave in another station. So if you have implants in your pod, you don't lose your implants if your pod gets blown up. If you don't have implants right now, you don't need to worry about that. That's more if you start plugging in expensive implants, and you're like, holy crap, I got 300 mil of implants. If my pod gets blown up, I lose 300 mil of value and have to buy it again. I don't want a PvP. In those kind of cases, or not PvP, but do something dangerous. In those kind of cases, you would have an empty blank clone. We would call it like a naked clone. And you would jump over to the naked clone, and at that point have no implants and you could go in PvP or do something that your pod can get blown up with and not worry and stress about it. Um, in, in this one right here, I'll, I'll cover the filaments real quick and then I'll go over some different type of ships and basically like the minimum of what you need to get through there and what helps and makes it easier. But on the filaments, the tranquil is going to be the level zeros. The word you see after that, the gamma, they're going to have different bonuses. And besides bonuses, they're going to have drawbacks. I'm going to open this one up. Now, reading this will tell you a little bit about it. Like it says, it will reduce explosive resistances, but enhance ship's shield strength. So this is going to give me more hit points to my shield, but it's going to make my explosive resistances go down. So some people, when they're designing ships for this, they'll go, okay, well, I'm using this filament. If it's going to lower my explosive resistance, I'm going to put rigs or modules on my ship to increase my explosive resistance. I'm going to counter what this does so my ship's stronger in there. 
So that's one way to build a ship around filaments to make sure that your ship's going to do good in there. The other thing you really need to have is some kind of active repairing. Whether it's a shield booster to repair your shield, or if you're an armor ship, an armor repair to repel your armor once you start getting into the armor damage. Um, the reason for this is sometimes you end up in those rooms with the ten guys, or even that one battleship sometimes can do so much damage that you're just going to die. And you know, holy crap, I'm going to die, I'm going to lose my ship, my pod, what can I do? That active repper is sometimes your only option. You can either fly away as fast as you can and try to get away from the damage, and or flip on that active repper and try to repair through the damage and hope you kill the guy and make it to the next room. Now, it probably right now you guys are all scared. You're like, oh my god, this sounds scary. I'm going to lose ships. I'm going to die. It sounds a lot harder than it really is. And after you do one, two, three of them, it becomes so much easier. You will lose a ship every once in a while. Um, I know Chris D that's in here right now. He's done a few, and I remember he lost a ship or two. It's always a learning experience. Like, usually you'll come out of it and go, okay, I lost my ship because I didn't have my afterburner on. I should have been going faster. Or I lost my ship because I was orbiting that guy in the middle of seven guys. They were all shooting me. I probably should have been kiting. I should have double clicked and flew away from the group. So they would have chased me and I would have took less damage. So usually you come away from the death learning something from it and able to go back in the next time doing better. Um, after the Tranquil Filament, which is technically a level zero, when you click over on Attributes, you'll see that it doesn't show a level here. Now let me go over to the next ones. The next is going to be a calm, and even the names will kind of let you know. Um, the more dangerous sounding the name is, the more dangerous the level is going to be. Agitated and fierce and raging, you can tell those are high level ones, but calm and tranquil, you can tell low level. So with the, let me see, a calm gamma, I go in here, you can see this one shows a level in it. That's why we call the other one level zero. It doesn't even show a level in there, and it's lower than the calm. It's the best learning one, the tranquils. If you don't have a tranquil, don't want to buy a tranquil, have calms, you can learn on a calm. The calm, level one, it's going to be the same bonuses because it's also a gamma. So we have explosive resistance and shield strength. These other ones, let's look at dark. So instead of Gamma, this is a Dark. Dark is... It reduces your weapon range, but makes your ship go faster. You're already bringing an Afterburner in. You don't need to go faster. Reducing your weapon range is probably going to hurt you. You want to be able to shoot far away if they're kiting you, or if you're not in close range. So this is one of the reasons why like, I don't even mess with Darks. I don't mess with any of them except Gammas. That tends to be the easiest for me to do, in, the, in most cases. So that covers them, so it pretty much goes tranquil, calm, then it goes to agitated, fierce, and then raging. And you'll loot these in there. I recommend selling the high-level ones. Look at this one here, this raging one I looted yesterday, actually. It's worth 15600000 Now that was out of just one of the containers, bam. Within less than 20 minutes, I made 15 million out of that container. Now, loot varies. You could come out of there with 2 million, 3 million. You could come out of there with 100 million. Skill books drop in there for Triglavian ships and Triglavian weapons. Those sell for a lot because they're rare. That's the only place you can get them. So there tends to be a limited supply on the market, so the price tends to be high. Okay, so I got all of this covered. So we got the filaments. Gammas are the best. Easiest are tranquil, second easiest are comms. Don't do the high level ones, you're gonna die, they're super tough. Even if you're in a fleet or three, they're still gonna be super tough. On to ships. Earlier I was talking about for solos you have to use a cruiser, for two mans you have to use destroyers, and three mans you have to use frigates. Um, it's a widely known thing, and you'll find out that a lot of people that do abyssals use a ship called a Gila. The Gila is the faction version of the Kaldari MOA. It's a cruiser. The MOA of, you know, the Tech 1 version actually uses hybrids, I believe. But the Garistas, which is a pirate version, the Gila is a missile ship. But its big bonus is on drones. So showing in here, the Gila gets a 500% to medium combat drone damage. 500%. 
500%. So this thing can fill two medium drones. So if it's 5%, that turns a 500%, that multiplies how many medium drones you have. You just now, it pretty much turns it into a ton of drones. It also gives them 250% hit points to medium drones. So now every drone has more than two times its hit points. This ship is great right here because you can just point yourself in the direction of the loot container and head for it and send your drones out. You'd be like, all right, buddies, do the fight for me. Kill everything. And they do it. They handle business. They kill everything. You get the loot. You head to the gate. This ship makes it super easy for the cruisers, for Solo. You don't have to use this in there. It's just a recommended. This is also great for doing combat sites, um, for doing level 3 and level 2 missions. It could do a lot of stuff. It's a, it's a great ship. Probably the best cruiser in the game. I'm going to use that today, for example. I'm going to open the ship fitting screen. Now, obviously, I have it set up with missiles, like I was saying. It's a drone ship. I have a drone link aug banner. Sometimes in the missiles, you have people that drain your capacitor. I have a cap battery here. I also have a cap rig. These are to ensure that if I come against those cap guys, that my capacitor, as you see, is stable. It's not in the red. You can go in here in a ship in the red, but if you can get your ship stable, the better you'll do. Because if they start draining you, you want your cap to be able to last long enough to kill them and make it to the next room. Um, I have lots of tank on here. Double shield extenders, uh, shield hardener, shield booster, afterburner. A big thing is you don't want to use micro warp drives in abyssals. They make you go way too fast. Sometimes there's gas clouds that give you a bonus in there. And sometimes that bonus is like a thousand percent to your speed. And if you have that micro warp drive on and you're already hauling ass and they give you a thousand percent, you're going to launch at high speed away from everything. Which that brings up my next thing that I didn't mention. Each one of these rooms are inside a large red bubble. If you touch the wall of this bubble or try to exit this bubble, your ship blows up. The damage comes in really fast, so you don't want to just float off in space while attacking enemies. You want to always orbit the enemy, um, orbit the gate, orbit a container, approach the gate, approach the container, do anything. Just don't float in space in a random direction. Um, so besides that, on the bottom I have ballistic control type units. They increase my drone damage and my missile damage. I have a damage control to give me higher resistances so I live longer. Um, drones in the bay, missiles in the thing, you just got to make sure you have everything you need. A big thing you're going to need to do, and a lot of people make a mistake of the first time they try abyssals, is they undock and go, okay, all right, I'm going to do these abyssals, and they leave the filament in the station. You need to actually move the filament to your ship, because to open the abyssal gate, you're going to have to open your inventory and double click on it. When you double click on that filament, it's going to then open up the gate in space for you to go into. So right now I'm going to do a Cruiser 1 solo, and I believe we do have two people to join me for a fleet uh, three-man one right after. So I'm going to, yeah. I'm in this ship, let me open my cargo bay. I may have one sitting in here already. I do not. So let me jump over. Close the fitting screen, back to my Bissell stuff. I'm going to do a COM, so I'm going to grab a COM Gamma. Um, if you don't know this, if you hold the Shift key and you left click a stack and drag it somewhere else, whether to another spot in the inventory, to a trade window, to your ship, anything like that, holding Shift and dragging will allow you to break the stack into smaller pieces. Brings up a window like this, shows me a quantity of one, that's okay. I threw it in my ship hangar, it's there with my, or my ship cargo, it's there with my ammo. I'm going to do something else right now to show you. So, when I do the three man, I'm going to need three filaments. We're going to Yeah, I was just going to ask if I need one. Yes, you need one per person. So if you're the fleet commander, you're going to need three of them to open the gate for three people to go in. If you're in a two man fleet in destroyers, you're going to need two of them in your inventory. It's going to consume them from the FC, the person who clicks them's inventory, and not the members themselves. 
So the FC, everybody will have to give them to him, or him just buy them and provide them. Usually when I run Abyssals, I just provide them. I'll buy large stacks and just use them over and over. Go buy like 30, 40 if you plan to do them, and just keep using them until you run out. Okay, so I'm going to take, with um, them, I'm going to do a Tranquil if we can. So I'm going to grab three Tranquil. And in case it doesn't work, I'm going to also grab three Gamma. Have you have you bought these or did you find them? I've looted most of these. Yes, this is. Okay. I, I tend to be a collecto. I hoard so much in this game. Like if I open all my <laughs> containers, you'd be like, "Oh my god, you have a billion isk worth of just junk sitting there." And I'm like, "Yeah, I just can't sell it because one day I might need it." You know, like <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad with like that. But I'm that person though. If you need something and you ask, I probably own it. I could probably give you one. That's cool. Okay, so I'm going to toss these into my item hanger because later I'm going to have to move these to a frigate because in the frig or in the three mans I have to use a frigate and not my cruiser. So I'm just going to have these ready for later. Drop them in the item hanger. Okay, so I have my ship, I have my filament, I know I got drones, ammo, it's set up right. I'm going to undock. Now, if you remember, I said that we can do this anywhere in space, but then I corrected myself and I was like, well, you got to kind of be far away from stuff. You can't do it right outside a station or right next to a gate or anything like that. You have to be far away from something. So it's best to warp out far away. So maybe, um, if you see this in overview too, if you guys don't have this, in, I can give you a link for it, but it opens up a really cool custom overview that has custom color tabs, organized inventory, or um, you know items on here, targets, miscellaneous, combat, friendly, warp outs, Warp out super helpful. It gets you away if you know you're going to die or you need to emergency get away. You click it and it just shows you anything you can warp to. Combat shows all your fighting targets, anything you can warp to. Airplane tab shows everything around you. Targets, anything you can actually click on and target. Miscellaneous, other stuff. Friendly, besides warp outs, it's going to show people in your fleet, drones in your fleet. It's a really cool overview. Um, I can give you a link for it. Let me drop it in the chat right now, actually. Right there. So if you guys want to install that, that'll help you guys out. It's much easier. It makes the game easier to play. Quality of life feature. Okay, so I'm just going to pick a planet. I'm going to click on the... See, the reason I mentioned that is because I was going to say, I'm going to click on the airplane tab, and you guys... Airplane tab? What is that? I don't have that. So there we go. I have everything over here. I'm just going to pick a planet far off somewhere and click Warp to within 100. Okay, so hopefully this lands me, oh, there's somebody's control tower out here, a player-owned tower, so I probably won't be able to do it from here. Let me try and see what happens. Oh, it might let me, let's see. So as you see, when I click on the filament, it's showing a drop-down box for the amount of ships. One cruiser, two destroyers, three frigates. Exactly like I was saying for ship layouts, what you have to use. So you would click this. I know it's me, I'm in a cruiser, and hit activate. And now it says you must be further than 1,000 kilometers away from a MAR control tower medium. So I knew that was going to be an issue. Let me try to warp to another place. Now even though I've clicked this airplane tab, I'm going to want to make sure to click back to combat, because when I get inside that abyssal on this airplane tab, I might not see the enemies. I want to be on the combat. Alright, so we're going to land over here and we'll see if we can activate this. Uh, another control tower. What are people doing? They're just putting them up everywhere, spamming them. Okay, so I can give you this bookmark if you need. So I'm going to open my bookmark window. 
we have something we call the Nalu safe spot. And it's a spot out in the middle of nowhere that Mom Wombat made for us. I'm going to work to that. We'll tend, we tend to use it to start fleets or do events and stuff like that. So I know when I land out there, there's not going to be no player-owned station that's going to get in my way of, of doing this. Sorry, Alex. It's the safe spot on a corporate bookmark, or it's in a personal bookmark? I have it in personal. Let me do this. Okay, I moved it to events. I'm going to drag this. Basically, I'm going to be sharing it with everybody in Corp right now. Make sure you click on this and click the online button, I believe it is. And that right there is going to have, it's going to place them in your bookmarks and you'll have the Nalu safe spot and a warping point. Don't go to that warping point. That's in a low sec. That's where we do low sec battles. Not a good place to be. So, now lose safe point. This is where you can warp to safely open an abyssal, as long as somebody else isn't doing it. If so, you'll have to get a new spot. Okay, so now I'm here. I'm going to close that window because I don't need it there. I'm going to click on my gamma. I'm on cruiser. I'm going to click activate. And we're going in. So remember, 20 minute timer, three rooms, there's a large bubble on the outside. You have to stay moving or you're going to take too much damage. So here we go, we're on our way in. Alright, great looking area. Really cool, cool looking atmosphere. I'm going to get going, turn my afterburner on. Shield resists on, target my enemies. Orbit on my enemies, launch my drones. Send my drones in. Now if you notice in the upper left here, we have a timer. This is telling me my 20 minutes. It's ticking down right now. 1913, 1912. I have to kill all these guys, get to the next room, and repeat that through three rooms before I die. Now right now, I'm orbiting them. They could be kiting me to the edge, so I gotta watch out for that bubble and be really careful. Send my drones in on the next target. See how the drones are doing everything for me? This is why I was talking about that Gila. Like, I don't even need to stress, like, I'm not even firing missiles. Missiles are optional here. <laughs> I'll shoot some missiles, speed this up real quick. Alright, so I'm going to approach the loot container. Bio-adaptive catch. That one is the good one. That's where the good loot's going to be. Ignore the other ones, because the other ones are going to make you waste time. Don't get caught up wasting time, because you could get to the third room, realize it's really tough, and run out of time because you spent too much time looting containers. So right now I'm approaching it. I probably should have done that earlier. Bad planning. I'm wasting time right now. So recall your drones back in. Good idea to get a reload like a while before you go into the next room so you have full ammo. And now like I was saying about these, these look weird for containers. You don't just right click and loot on them. They're red and they're almost like enemies. I have to actually target this and attack it and then it becomes lootable. So the bioadaptive, I'm targeting it. I'm going to launch a single volley of missiles. That single volley will blow it up and I'll be able to loot it. You don't want to waste ammo, so just click your ammo once and then click it back off again. And I'm going to loot this. So if you're solo, you get all the loot. So let's see what we got right here. Sometimes good, sometimes not. We got 3.6 million. So 
So I'm going to approach the gate. So that right there was less than four minutes in my time, and I got almost four million isk. So about a million per minute right there. Good time investment. All right, and this is a level one. Imagine if you get good at these and move on to the higher level ones. Okay, so I'm heading to the gate. I'm going to jump through. I'm great on time. I use less than four minutes. Like as long as you're using less than seven per room, you should make it out on time. Okay, we're in the next room. Uh-oh, we have a battleship, and it's the named battleship. This guy will try to kite you. He will keep flying away from you further and further. You need to afterburner on and rush him. You need to get to him as quick as you can, and drones are awesome here because you can send them in before you get in range and have them attack. So I'm, see, he's trying to pull away from me right now, and I'm trying to approach him. I'm taking a little bit of damage. This is one of those points where you're like, holy crap, I might take so much damage, by the time I get to him, he could have me dead. So this is where these reppers come in handy. So I'm flipping on my repper and getting some of my shield back while I approach him. I'm getting in range. They start damaged already. They give you a, CCP gives you a little bit of a fair advantage. They're almost dead. So you don't have to kill them from the beginning because it would be hard to take out a, a battleship. So my drones are picking away. I'm watching my drones life. They're doing fine. If your drones ever start taking damage, pull them back in and then let the, the aggro go onto you and then launch your drones again. I bumped into the gate. Ignore that. Okay, so he's almost dead, so I'm just going to approach the container. Bioadaptive catch. See, my drones pretty much did all the work for me here. So that's why I say whether you're going frigate, destroyer, uh, cruiser, if you can use a drone boat, use it. It'll definitely make things easier for you. Now flying for the container, um, just approach it, shoot it, loot it, head for the gate. Now see this thing right here? This is one of those bursts I was telling you about. Sometimes there's clouds that make you go fast or have low resistances, some that do damage to you, some that give you just different things. So right here you see 60% turret track at speed bonus. So that means I'm using missiles right now, but if I was using a turret ship, if I would have kited all the enemies into this area or at least made myself go into this area, my guns would have got way more effective. So pay attention to the, the bonuses and the area of effect things, because they can make uh, room easier or harder for you, depending on if you get in them or not. Containers blown up. We got only half a mil of loot this time. Approaching the gate. Don't forget to pull your drones back in. And then we're on to the third room. Let's check the time. 13 minutes. So in seven minutes, we finished two rooms pretty much. That's good. Great on time. When you do this good, if you beat the enemies in the third room, feel free to loot all the containers in the third room. You have time as long as you still get out that final gate. Now when we do three mans, since there tends to be that one good loot container and there tends to be three rooms, we tend to take turns. One person will loot one container, second room, second person will loot a container, third room, third person will loot a container. Okay, I got three ships here. Launch my drones. Get in orbit on one of them. Missiles, drones. What I do right here is I know this thing's going to die soon. I'll already pre-target the next one I, I want to attack. Let's say we'll go for the third. So now I'm ready. Click drones, click them to attack. Now I'll missile the other guy. Approach the bioadaptive. 
and this is the final room. So when these guys die, if I wasn't doing the class, I could stay and loot all three of these containers because we know we have more than enough time. We conquered all three rooms. And that guy's dead. Pull my drones in, target the container, blow it up, loot it, and head out the gate, and I'll be done. Gates in here look pretty cool too. They start in a smaller form and they kind of expand and build their way outward. It's pretty cool looking. And what did we get? Two hundred fifty k. So we got almost five mil worth of loot. Not too bad. So these surveys, if you go to the DED station, these sell directly to the DED station. So that's 300K, 200K, 200K. It's instant money. We got filaments, which can get you into more abyssals. And these right here are used in making triglavian ships. If you ever want to make any of the triglavian ships, I'd save these. If not, sell them. You also get things in here called mutaplasmids. You can use those on items, and it's almost like rolling the dice. It custom, it customizes the stats on the, the item. So you can make custom items that are better than they normally are. You can also get skill books. You can also get blueprints. And there's a few other things that drop in there, too. Okay, and so I landed back in Nalu. All done. Let me dock up. And I believe I have two people that wanted to join Fleet to do a Fleet one, correct? Yes, yeah. I, I am ready. ready. So I know Darth Kato's one, right? And who was the other one? It's, uh, what's, what's my, my name, name in the game? I can't remember. Yansan. <laughs> okay, okay. Do we need to bring, bring anything? Uh, a frigate. Make sure you have an armor repper, a shield repper. Make sure that you have drones if it has a drone bay. Make sure you have at least a couple thousand ammo in the, you know, at least a decent amount. If you need more ammo, I can give you some. I have uh, just uh, the pulse lasers. Okay, okay, you should be good then. And so right now I'm going to sh switch ships. I'm going to move over to one I have called the Worm. It's a Kaldari pirate frigate. It's also in that same line as the Gila. It has bonuses to drones and bonuses to missiles. Uh, it'll be perfect for this. I will go into the item hanger and throw the filaments into the bay so I can open it for us. I only have one arm repair okay you should be fine just keep okay. your afterburners on keep moving approach them or orbit them and if you start taking too much damage try to get away start approaching the gate or something okay and just put your full damage on the guys and then go for the containers yeah Okay, I'm undocking. What I'll do is, if you guys are out there, I'll warp the whole fleet to the safe point. If not, I'll warp there and have you guys warp to me. Well, I got, I got the, the safe point, point from you, so... I can, can go, go there. there. Safe. Okay. Yeah. okay, so we have all of us here. I did a warp fleet, so we all should land at the safe point right now. Now, do you guys know what your safeties are? Safeties? 
Yes, yeah, so look above your shield armor and all that to the left. There's going to be a little button there. It might be green. Yeah, uh, it's, it's green. green. Turn that to yellow. Okay. okay. You'll be fine. What you have to worry about is turning it to red. Never turn it to red unless you're going into, like, null sec. Okay. okay. Okay, so I got all three of us here. I'll close this window. We should all have our safeties to yellow. I need my drones in a group. I don't know why they're not. There we go. And so I'm going to open the filament. Now this fleet one goes a little different. I can't force you to go in, so you're going to have to actually click on it and hit the enter button. Now notice guys when I click on it right now, and I'm in a frigate, and I'm in a fleet. So it reds out the button, it won't let me click on the button with a one cruiser. I have to actually set it to where it'll allow. It'll, it checks your fleet to make sure you're legit. So three frigates, and it turns blue. Here I go, I'm opening it. So remember guys, stay moving after burner on. If you take damage, repair, um, click on the abyssal, jump in. I'm saying not sure how to explain this, but something went wrong. <laughs> well, I, I can, can press, press activate, activate gate. gate. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so try it. Go ahead, activate gate. It worked all of a sudden. The game actually popped up a menu and says, uh, I don't know how to explain this, but something went wrong. <laughs> Okay, so keep trying till you get in, and then get moving. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I think... Okay, so we got a single guy in this room and three small ones. Head for the big guy first. If you have drones, launch your drones. Remember, afterburner on. Shield resist if you have them. target up to three small guys and pick them off after. Now remember, if you ever see that red wall, spin your camera the other way and double click into the circle so you get away from it. <coughs> okay, we'll take turns on the loot, so Yasan, you go for the container this time, so head to the biocombinative catch. Okay. Me and Darth will approach the gate. Don't jump yet, Darth, just approach it. The reason is in the fleet, you don't want one person to end up in the next room, get blown up while the other people are still looting and on their way to the gate. I think I found something out, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. So click on the container, shoot it, and then loot it, and then head to the gate. And me and Darth will be there waiting for you. We're great on time right now. We're still at just barely under 18 minutes. So we did that first room in two minutes. There we go, and I'm looting it. Okay. Seven hundred and forty-three. Not bad, not bad. For two minutes of time, that's good money. 
And so me and Darth, okay, Darth is almost here. Yasan's heading to the gate, I believe. Let's all jump through yep. the gate now. So I'm activating Jumping the gate. Yep. Yeah, me jumping out. Okay, we have a battle cruiser in this room. These things look like bugs, like cockroaches. All right, this shouldn't be too hard. I think he just has a lot of hit points. And then so Yasan looted the container in the first one. After we kill this one, Darth, you'll get the container in this one. we go. So me and Yasan will pull our drones in and approach the gate and Darth will get the container. Why do we have to reload my crystals every time? Not sure why you have to reload them. It feels weird. That's why I'm taking so long to... Uh, I don't know. Whoever has their drones out, make sure to pull them back in. And I'm going to go ahead and jump through. Yasan, you could follow me if you want, and we'll do the third room. Yep. And we got two cruisers in here. Approaching them, gonna get in orbit. Send my drones in, fire. You guys see it's really easy. Like with the three of us, like we glided through this level one. Nobody's ship yeah, got blown sure. up, like nobody even came close to dying. Super easy. And I know Darth was a little worried yesterday. He was like, Oh, I wanna do it, but I'm I'm a little scared. Like and I can understand, like, trying something new in the game, if you don't have a lot of ISK, you don't have a lot of ships, you don't want to lose what you do have, um, hopefully this, like, gets you guys interested in trying these out. You could do them right here in Nalu, and it's good ISK, like, really good money. And I'm not going to get that container, so either one of you guys can have it. I can take it, though. Normally the third person of whoever's in your fleet doing these would grab it. Or if you're two people doing destroyers, you would just have to take turns sharing that third one between the two of you. But it's cool, you, a couple of you guys can get in a fleet, start knocking these out, boom, 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 boom. Next thing you know, you guys made 50 mil each. Really quick. Yeah, this, is, this is pretty fun, actually. But this was a level zero or one? This was the level zero, yes. Okay. So level one will be a little bit harder, but not much harder. Like, I, I figured, do the level zero, we have very low chance at any deaths, like, it won't be too challenging. That's probably why we only saw one or two enemies in each room, and not three to ten enemies. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's it. It was about 600k in that one. Yeah. Not too bad. Uh, it gets better the higher level you get on these. Don't try the really high level ones until you, you really feel comfortable. I say slowly work up. Like if you can do 
20 level ones and you feel like you're acing them, try a level two. Oh, I, I guess you can get lucky in the lower levels as well and get some big. You can, yes. Loot. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Um, any questions about it all? About the filaments, the ships, fittings, um, the abyssal itself, the loot? No, sir. What's like the recommended level for it or something like that? Starting these, anybody can do them. You can do this as a brand new player with low skills with tech one ships with tech one modules um that was a level one that we are level zero that we just did and even as a new alpha player i would say you guys can do level zero and ones easily in tech one ships with tech one modules solo and in a fleet well i guess it's important to read on the filaments yes which one you go into yeah, definitely, because you, you don't want to click, like I was saying, I, I recommend the Gammas. The Gammas are really good. If you're a shield ship, it's giving you more shield hit points. If you're an armor ship, it's giving you a buffer of shield hit points that they have to shoot through before they get to your armor. So regardless of what you fly, the Gamma tends to be a good choice. All right. Cool. Any other questions about it all? If not, I guess we could call that a, a wrap. I think some, so, something will come up. <laughs> okay, if there is I'll a... Ask you later. Yeah, feel free to ask in Discord, ask in Corp Chat, anything. I'll be there and answer it as quick as I can. Um, and that's about it. If you guys want, start some fleets up. Get people together, see who wants to do it. Um, or if you have cruisers, try them out solo. Let me know how it goes. Sure. Thank you for the tutorial. Yeah, no problem. Have fun, guys. I'll be FK shortly. I'll be back in a little bit. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah. Bye.